Welcome to the NAM Show 2024. It's day two, and let's do some daily coverage. We're here, NAM 2024, day two, at the Ormsby booth. I'm joined by Perry Ormsby, and we're going to be talking about some Ormsby's. I know you like these. So this is one of our resin boards, and we've got three of these here today. So this, I guess, is, well, it's a swamp ash body, and what we do to process it to get this finish is we sandblast it. And the grain line is significantly softer than the rest of the wood, so that digs out. And then we primer it, colour it, and then we fill in the grain, and then wash that colour off. And that's how you get that effect which you may have seen on the Black Friday guitars that we do with the, the black with the color, but we just sort of reverse the colors up. The um, composite epoxy fretboard, it's a, a special resin that we've discovered that is quite strong, so it's strong enough to use as a fretboard. Um, we do it to a polished finish, but we can do a satin finish as well. The satin finish feels smoother than ebony. Um, the polished feel feels smoother than polished lacquer, so let's say a Fender style where they lacquer the fretboard. It just feels a bit smoother. You can still use your lemon oil or whatever on there or, or wax to, to get even smoother if you like. Um, this one's got carbon fibre reinforced neck and a roasted maple timber used there. And yeah, the little Goliath etching we do. It's a funny story about this shape. I don't even know if I should say, but I'll tell it anyway. I designed this shape up before I even made my first guitar. And, you know, a number of years later, you know, I'm making guitars now, I'm making guitars for a living. I showed the design to someone. He absolutely loved it. We're, we're getting ready to get started on making it. Uh, I think he paid a deposit and then disappeared. No contact, couldn't get hold of him. And then next thing I know, a year later, he pops up on a forum with this shape made by another brand, who is a very, 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 very big, big brand that inspired me. I thought that was pretty cool, actually, that they... They made it. They made it, yeah. Um, so a couple of people had noticed that and said, oh, you took that. And I was like, no, 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 they took, they took mine. But it's cool. Uh, they only made the one off. I think it was a NAM special in 2005 or six or something like that. Um, and it was orange. So there you go. You can try and Google it. Um, but it was cool. It was actually like I wasn't disappointed in the slightest. I was like, man, that is so cool that my inspiration. You know what I mean? I felt good. It felt good. Even though I didn't get to build the original one. We're here at the Loudon booth, and I always thought that Loudon was just acoustics, but we walked past, we saw that they have some electrics, and uh, yeah, could you tell us a little bit about them? Yeah, sure. Um, well, George actually designed electric guitars uh, way back when he first started out, so nearly 50 years ago. Um, so it's always been on his mind to have another go, let's say, and uh, just before the pandemic, we had the GL10, um, built because uh, Ed Sheeran had a, uh, a friend Gary Lightbody who built the We, we Beat the, Will, the We Loudon for and uh, in a, as a return favour um, Ed said to uh, George well can you build an electric so George sort of thought well okay went away to uh, Portugal to design the guitar um, and this is how the GL10 came about it's actually the shape of our um, S uh, guitar, cutaway guitar. So although it's a single cut and we think it's uh, a sort of common sort of single cut LP style guitar, um, it is still slightly different. And as we look closer, it's significantly different in how we've cut away certain areas to make it more ergonomically comfortable. That's got a, a, a zero code top on it, a mahogany back. 
No stop tail piece and we just uh, put it straight through from the back there. So that's the uh, single cut just out now. These are just prototypes. So we're looking to get these ready for around springtime. George has always been a fan of uh, the 335. He has a vintage 335, but this isn't obviously a traditional 335. It's, it's slightly different in the fact that it's almost like a, a sort of faux center block in a way, because it's still sandwiched uh, Tasmanian blackwood and uh, mahogany, but we just chambered, if you see what I mean. So kind of like how a thin line would work, but we chambered more of that. And again, going with the, the lower imperials, we also offer a, uh, a P90 version, and there are uh, there, there's uh, going to be options for different neck calves and things like that as well. So it's more to get the guitar to fit the end user. Uh, it's just the start right now. Well, the, yeah, it is. So this one's still um, in its prototype stage. So we've got some more refinements to uh, go through, but we just thought we'd bring it out, get it into people's hands, see what they think have a listen and um, and then just use some of the feedback and see how we go really from there. Very cool. That's Loudon. I'm here at the Yamaha booth with Andy and Andy, Yamaha have released some new Pacificas this year for 2024. Big news. Could you run us through? I certainly can. Uh, Yamaha and Pacifica. Pacifica's been on our price sheet since about 1991 in various shapes and forms developed as the guitar for the session player that needed versatility out of one guitar with multiple sounds. So what we've done on this next generation is done a Pacifica Standard Plus and now a Pacifica made in Japan, the professional level. So we can break down the specs of what you see here. The big thing to talk about is actually the pickups that are on board. The pickups were a collaboration with Rupert Neve. So the famous Rupert Neve from the pro audio world and recording world is now coming into the guitar world. So Yamaha partnered with them on these low output pickups that are wider sounding, without that little mid-range peak that you get out of single coils. And what I also have is a better balance across the five-way switch. So the, the humbucker is not so loud that I need to ratchet it down when I get to that position, okay? So single, single hum, coil splitter in the back, stainless steel frets, which we learned on RevStar, everybody loves stainless steel now. Goto bridge, Goto locking tuners. Here's another thing we did. We pushed the nut back a little bit to increase mass and then gave you your truss rod adjustment down on the heel of the neck. So you can adjust the truss rod in between songs if you're playing a gig or whatever. Fantastic. 13 and three quarter inch radius on the standard compound radius on the professional we're able to do nine and a quarter to 13 and three quarters on the bottom end just absolutely a superior built guitar and available starting in february you'll be able to find them in your local retailer great fantastic man do we have a, a price point um the standard plus is 1349 us the professional 2199 us hard shell case ira treatment on the wood the compound radius and all of that made in Japan loveliness that we do at Yamaha. Okay, cool. And this has been great. So as you can hear, it's getting noisy in here. This is what we do. This is your Yamaha booth, NAM 2024. Thank you, Andy. Thanks, guys. There's a lot of walking at NAM. It's pretty big. And um, one thing that I like to do to uh, entertain myself is go rock star spotting. Now you might think, well, are you talking about all the big notable names at NAM because there are some you know you see Rudy Sarza walking around no I'm not talking about actual rock stars I'm talking about the people who come to NAM dressed like head to toe in leather and snakeskin boots uh, they've robbed Slash's top hat and act like they uh, are at a like a fashion walkthrough they don't walk they strut and it's my favorite thing to see everybody's wearing hats here it's funny we're here at G7 Capos so uh, what have you got thank you very much for your time guys so this is the performance three and it's a capo or capo while we're in America to try and get into capo mode for a week. So this is our performance three with adaptive radius technology. And you can see here the string pad, you can give it a little squeeze and it'll adapt to your fretboard radius. Make sure that you have a buzz free experience and it will uh, give you the best tune in possible. It stores on the top of your headstock, secure it, little squeeze to release, just flick it off. There you Very have nice. It. I 
I'm here at the Boutique Guitar Showcase. I'm here with Dean Gordon, and he's going to show us one of his creations. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, this is one of my Virtus models in a seven string variation. Uh, this is a really special one because, you know, it's like if I had to spec a guitar myself, this is exactly kind of what I would end up doing. It's a Harley Davidson color. It's called Billy or Teal with a Porsche chalk gray. Uh, you know, everyone asks me what I call this. Lower horn, lower bout. It's my wacky feature. Uh, and then, you know, the green hardware that you see on it is actually a ceramic coating that I did with a local gunsmith down by where I live in Florida. And, uh, you know, it just came together for a great guitar with a Wenge neck, uh, Macassar ebony fretboard. It's got carbon support rods in there, you know, to give you that nice stable stiff neck because the seven strings have all the extra tension. Uh, and then, of course, bare knuckle war picks. Uh, I think these are probably the best seven string pickups on the market. They're so clear, so dynamic. You really can't get any, uh, you know, can't get any more balls than that. And just on the bolts on the guitar, even those are you've got the surround. Same thing, yeah. Ceramic coating on there. I try to leave no stone unturned when it comes to the details on the guitars. So I just kind of went with it. I actually would have gone more. Uh, you know, I would have gone more into it uh, with detail, but I didn't have enough time for the NAMM show. And because this was the first time I was doing the ceramic coating on the hardware, I actually wasn't so sure how it was going to come out. So I ended up kind of just doing a few pieces here and there. And I mean, I think it looks great. It, d it does. <laughs> so, I mean, this one's super light. It's a super fun guitar. The Virtus is my most popular model. So, of course, you know, a lot of shredder type guys, heavier style playing, they like this model because it's more aggressive really easy to get up in here uh, access wise uh, and that's of course part of my philosophy is ergonomics uh, so yeah not All much right. more to say. Thank you. Thank you. We're here at the Cream Guitars booth. We were here last year it was a fan favorite so we had to come back again Thank and we had to so see what you've done. Gilen. Thank you so much. Well welcome again and yeah let's come and see the craziness that happened this last year and now we're showing this I'm 24. <laughs> well, this is our new collection. I think last, well, last year we present some Mexican guitars, but now we, I went to other places. So, from a sky with buttons to, yeah, I, I don't know if you can see the deepness because a lot of people also, they think that it, it's like a wallpaper, but But yes, also, we can be now skulls again. We can put active pickups here, huh? It will sound amazing. Uh, then uh, this year was very important because we, we made a guitar for Steve Bai. This is a replica that we, what we made for him. Yeah, it reminds me to my grandma. My grandma used to wear this type of uh, buttons, but uh, the texture when I opened the when when where she had all the collection, it was it looks something like this and more like a treasure. And I want to make a homage for her. Uh, this is one of the biggest guitars or the most photographed guitars. Is the F guitar. <laughs> so. Yeah, this year has been pretty well. And for the ladies, we've never, we're always thinking about the ladies. Uh, the, well, something different, but a lot of, a lot of people really like it. Uh, so yes, also this year we're presenting our, our bases that are right here. And also, uh, as you can see, uh, we're keeping the same shape and again the the new and ah and astonish finishing uh, it's very important to be able to to tell your audience you know how you feel and and, and play different when when I when I play with something like this like when when I grab a, a jacket that I know that I look good you know and, and I feel like more Ah, yeah, this is the night. <laughs> so, uh, it's something that I feel, you know, <laughs> like with these instruments. Uh, 
So when you feel when you feel uh, happier and more uh, trust and confident, you make new music. You 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 go to different places, and that's exactly what we're trying to do. Did you see my ninja movement? It's on tape. It, I'm, yeah, in another world, I in another life, I was a ninja. Okay. Yeah, maybe we can talk about we can make an episode of this type of uh, wall stands <laughs> because I don't know if I want to put it there again. <laughs> you know, uh, Ro. So well, in, in, on bases now we have two models: the the, the, the revolver and the, and the voltage. On revolver we have the gas configuration. It's again it's Seymour Duncan uh, quarter pound. Seymour Duncan uh, preamps, Raftec uh, bridge, Raftec uh, dot, Raftec tuners with the uh, uh, ratio. Also, it's laminated in five pieces, so it doesn't move. But also, below the fretboard, we add to our basses and to all our guitars, two bars of carbon fiber, so it doesn't move. Also, our basses have the resonation plate. This helps uh, to connect the, the, the neck to the bridge. And, well, it, you, you can hear the frequencies just enriching it uh, by, by the... When, when you get more mass, uh, physical mass with the metal, uh, the, the, all the, the frequencies go straight to the, to the string. So we're very happy with the results. I, I hope you could try it. And when will these be available? Now we are going to be available. Thanks God. And thanks to the great work of all our team. We have been three years just developing, just developing, not selling, because uh, if, you want, if you are going to pay one euro, it has to work it, you know? Every euro that you pay. So now we are going to, now we have distributors in Europe. Now we're going to be available in Ireland, uh, France, Germany, and a lot of other parts of the world. It's going to be available around three, three months from here. All the orders are start to go to stores. And important, uh, we are, are only going to work with stores because all the big brands are now going direct and we are very worried about the small stores you know the family stores that take care uh, their business for the last 40 years and they were bringing the music to your city well those are the stores that where we want to work so uh, you're not going to find us on the internet or like that you're going to find us in that store that they treat you amazing Please go visit them, please give them your your business and let's make a lot of music. That's great. <laughs> well thank you for showing us ah, what you've done. No, it's a pleasure to see you man. It's a pleasure to see you. Gillen. And please subscribe and watch all the videos. They have amazing videos. What's your company called? Oh, my, my company is called Marconi Lab, and this guitar is called Ego Guitar. So, uh, we have a guitar that many, many people is impressed by the shape of the guitar. We did a lot of work to design this guitar, and we focused our attention on the sound. So, every, every part of this guitar is designed to produce sound. We started using this new material, this black material that you see is called MAG. Uh, this name stands for uh, Magnitudine, it's, an, it's developed by an Italian company and usually is used by, um, to create speaker panel. Uh, and so is the material designed to emit the sound and propagate the sound. So we designed this guitar to use this material. This layer that you see here is not for aesthetic reason, but is a PCB, we call this mainframe. On this PCB we print all the signal track going from the pickup 
to the control box, so we have no wires in the guitar. We have a huge ground plane, and also we know the length of the wires, the position of the wires, very reliable during the years. Also, you see here our full access neck. We have an asymmetric neck joint, so you can access all the 24 frets. It's a regular scale, 25.5, and on the back you can see this is very difficult to see because we have asymmetrical variable shape. So the midpoint of the neck goes from here to here. And this is not for aesthetic re reason, but we call this programmable elasticity neck because where the wavelength is shorter, the neck will bend. Where the, the wavelength is higher, this, the stiffness is increased. So we will know that this neck will bend here and we can manage about where we want the neck to bend. And this guitar, you see, we, we couple the materials to have the right sound. Here we are using this mag and this chopped carbon fiber. This material has been developed by Lamborghini and this uh, chop is um, chopped carbon fiber, um, then pressed and heated. So the commercial name is Forged Carbon Fiber. Uh, on this guitar, we have the high produce technology, so you can um, connect your phone with the guitar and then you can program which pickup you want in each position. And here we have the GMR3 pickups. This GMR is a coilless pickup. We developed this pickup. Uh, since we don't have a coil, the frequency response is wide and flat, 20 Hz to 20,000. I love it because it, it, it's so different. Yes, yes. And this sometimes is a pain for us because we have to design each part. So if you do Stratocaster like a guitar, you can just buy your hardware everywhere. We have to design each part. For example, this bridge is made for us in Italy and it's made from solid brass. It's, it's a huge quality, huge cost and um, uh, very reliable. But develop a part like this is a work of years, many years. So every, every single part that we design is a long process. You have to design, test, be back designing because something went wrong and test again. And that's how I work. But we have the passion to do this. So uh, thank you for showing us. Thank you. Thank you. We're here with uh, Cower Guitars. Hey, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm Josh. I work here at Cower Guitars. Uh, this is our lineup this year. So on our left, we have our Super Chief. It's our signature hollow body guitar one of our all-time favorites. Next up, we have our Corona Supreme, which is a thin line model, and this beautiful rose print. There's a really beautiful design on that. Spanish cedar back, roasted flame maple neck. Just really love this guitar. And then we're super excited here at NIM For the first time, we're releasing a new model. This is our Griffin model, and super aggressive edges. We had to go with the bright neon pink finish. Um, we absolutely love this guitar and have been developing it for the last several months and so for it to be released we're really excited. We have an Electro Liner and this is a, uh, we have it rose printed. We have a bound top which is new for our Electro Liner. And then uh, this is a Spanish Cedar back and a fully Wenge neck oil finish. Um, all of our fretboards are Wenge, and then this one we just did a complete neck out in Wenge. We love it. And then our flagship Banshee model is our most well-recognized model. And just same neon pink, holo flake sparkle. So we're really excited about what we have here, guys. Very nice. We've been spending some time in the boutique guitar showcase, and we just stumbled upon this. This is a GNG, I believe. But look at this guitar. It's completely inlaid. Look like there's a face in it. Like that's that's more than a guitar. That's art. So we're here at the Sire booth and a lot of people are familiar with the Sires, the Larry Carlton's, but for 2024, they've launched these more metal uh, super strats. I'm seeing Floyd Roses, I'm seeing neck throughs, I'm seeing Burl, I'm seeing lots of cool stuff. Nam. Nam is pretty busy right now. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave and get some food because I'm hungry. And I, I don't like how loud it is. I hate, I hate the NAM soundtrack. It's just bass players playing different slap bass. 
and I'm fine with slap bass sometimes, but at a certain point, it's just like, it's just you're playing drums on a bass, and I don't like playing drums very loud. Thank you. We just had a Jack in the Box, because yeah, Jack in the Box. we jacked in the Box. It, it, it's, the box. It's, <laughs> it was one of the finest meals I've had in America. Today. Today. T today. This is my first meal today. So it is currently like five past three, something like that, middle of the day, but it's starting to get a little bit too busy and loud and noisy, so you can't really do much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back tomorrow and we're gonna record some guitars. I didn't get to play the Ormsby's today, I got to talk about the Ormsby's, but we're gonna play them. There'll be a full video booth walkthrough there, not just the clips that you've seen in this video, as well as more stuff. So again, drop the booths that you really, 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 really wanna see us visit for tomorrow, because we're doing daily uploads. Subscribe so you don't miss those and Will I be able to exit through this door? Yeah. <laughs> um, we have, the reason that we're leaving early as well. <laughs> the, reason <that> we're <laughs> the reason that we're leaving is because the, uh, we've, we've got busy evening ahead with the influencer creator Nam thingy my bobber uh, that we have to go to and that's that maybe we'll put in some footage there if not thank you for watching and we'll see you next time like the video subscribe bye bye